Let's talk about one of the trickiest concepts in JavaScript, which is the event loop. But trust me, it's not as bad as you think, so let's do it in about five minutes. What's up, everyone? My name is James Hugh Quick, and I do weekly videos about web development-related topics. And I talk a lot about JavaScript. I've talked a lot about asynchronous JavaScript in the past. And I want to tackle a pretty challenging concept, maybe not as bad as you think, which is the event loop in Node.js. So I'm actually referencing an article here from Andrew Hu from the No Doctors Group on Dev.2. I'll have a link to that content for you to uh, go and check out as well, which is the Node.js Visualized Event Loop. And I'm going to kind of use the video in here to kind of talk through how the event loop works in JavaScript. So this has great little animated examples, and I think that would be a great starting point. All right, so really quick, if you want to get better at CSS and JavaScript, I've got two courses that are now on sale, Advent of CSS and then Advent of JS. And these are each going to give you 24 challenges to practice your core CSS and JavaScript skills. These are going to be on sale for 50% off with the coupon code BLACKFRY through Monday, December 5th. So if you go and check this out right now or in the next couple of days, you'll get 50% off the bundle of both Advent of CSS and Advent of JavaScript. So the one thing I want to cover first is this idea of JavaScript being single threaded. JavaScript at any time can only do one thing as opposed to other languages like C, C++, et cetera, that can have multiple threads to do multiple things at the same time. So you'll hear an important distinction in JavaScript where it can't run things in parallel. It can't do two things at the same time. It can do things concurrently, which kind of lets them go on at the same time behind the scenes but then it processes those results at different times. It can't process things at the same time. So because of that, the asynchronous nature with one single thread in JavaScript is very important. Where we don't want to block the, the single thread that JavaScript depends on, we want to offload the long standing tasks like making API calls and database calls somewhere else to be executed. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So in this example, we have three lines of code. We have a console log, we have a database query that also has a callback function associated with it. And then we have a subsequent console log. So what happens inside of JavaScript is every time we call a function, we throw that function onto the call stack. Now a stack is a data structure that is last in first out. So if we add something to the stack, let's say a function, and then that function calls another function, we add that to the stack, add the next function that it calls to the stack, et cetera. And we have to finish the top most item on the stack before we can go to the one below it. So if we add one, add another, another, finish this one, pop it off, finish this one, pop it off, finish the last one, pop it off, and now we have nothing left. So that is what the call stack inside of Node is. It's keeping track of what functions are called and in what order to execute them. So with the console log, we go through, we call this function, we, or we add it to the call stack, we call it, it executes because it's synchronous code and now it disappears from the call stack. It changes though when we run this database query. When we run this database query, this is something that needs to run asynchronously. So JavaScript wants to be able to initiate this process, but then kick it off somewhere else to be handled asynchronously so that it doesn't block the main thread in JavaScript. Now that somewhere else is the libuv API inside of Node.js, which is built with C++ and, and does have the ability to run things asynchronously and in parallel. So JavaScript takes in this uh, function to the call stack. It says, hey, this is something that's going to take some insignificant amount of time or some non-trivial amount of time needs to run asynchronously. So we're going to dump this off and put that call inside of the libuv API. Now with that thing offloaded to the behind the scenes underlying APIs, JavaScript can continue to process the code. So it's gonna go down to the next function here, which is another console log and do the same thing it did before, add it to the call stack, call that thing, finish it and pop it off. Now, again, if it were to call another function, you would stack them on top of each other and pop them off one at a time. So how does JavaScript know when that behind the scenes asynchronous work is done? Well, this is where the event queue becomes uh, so important. And this is where the event loop and the event queue come into play. So what happens is after JavaScript offloads this asynchronous function to the libuv API, the libuv API will do the processing. And when it's done, it's going to add that callback to the event queue. Now, the event queue is a queue. It's a data structure that is first in, first out. So think of it just like a queue for a sandwich shop, a line for tickets to get into a movie theater, et cetera. The first one to come in is the first one that gets served. So as things are processed asynchronously, 
in the libuv api as they're finished it's going to throw those callbacks onto the event queue and then the event loop is a thing that's just constantly looking inside of the event queue to see if there's any new events that javascript needs to act on now javascript can't act on one of these these events until the actual call stack is empty so as long as the call stack is empty the event loop will go and grab an event inside of the event queue and it will now propagate that up to the javascript layer into its call stack so that it can handle it just like any other callback function. Now, if that callback is another asynchronous function, it will then dump that thing back over to the back end or behind the scenes uh, libuv API and go through that full cycle again. Otherwise, if that callback is synchronous, it will execute that thing and pop it off the call stack. Now, this cycle continues to happen over and over. JavaScript is gonna process code, it's gonna add it to the call stack. If it's synchronous, it will execute and be done. If it's async, it will offload that to the libuv API and let it ha handle it asynchronously. When it's done, it will send the event to the event queue, which is primarily a callback. The event loop is going to continue to search or look inside of the event queue and say, if the call stack is empty, I'm gonna take the first event in the queue and throw that, on, throw that callback onto the call stack. So this is what enables JavaScript, although it is single threaded, to appear to be able to run things asynchronously slash in parallel, it's because it's offloading things to those lower level APIs and then processing those events coming in when it can. Again, JavaScript can only do one thing at a time. It's single threaded, but the behind the scenes lower level APIs are what enable this asynchronous JavaScript or asynchronous nature of JavaScript to exist. So that is the Node.js event loop in about five minutes. I hope that made sense. If you have additional questions, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to go and follow No Doctors and then the author of this specific article, which is Andrew Hu, to show some support for the content that they created. And thank you to them for creating this animation, which made the explanation of this a lot easier. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this gives you a better idea of the JavaScript event loop. Let me know if you have comments, questions, anything you want in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time.